Okay, super quick one for you today because in this video I'm going to show you how to make this float and click to call button for your Squarespace website. So let's fire it up and dive right in. So I'm going to start this one off by adding a button to the page and it really doesn't matter where you stick this button, it can go in any section in any part of the page because we'll be overriding its position. And in the button settings we'll change the link to phone. And put the phone number you want the button to call in here. And you know what? I'm going to put my good mate Daniel's number. And we'll test it out by giving him a call in a bit. So we'll save this. And then we can change our text to something a bit more relevant. Then we'll save the whole page. Next we'll get the idea of the button block using this block ID finder plugin. For those of you who are new to this channel, I use this loads. And as always, the link to it will be in the description below. So we'll grab the ID by clicking on the ID next to the block and then I'm just going to close this down. And then we'll come over to our custom CSS, so design custom CSS. And then we'll paste it into the CSS editor followed by a couple of curly brackets. And then we've only got four lines of code we need to put in to move this around, but if you want to have this just display on mobile, I'll go over how to do that at the end. So first we need to fix the position of the button, so we'll give this a property of position and a value of fixed and then a semicolon to close the line off. And your button may disappear at this point depending on what kind of mood Squarespace is in, but we'll bring that back in the next couple of lines. So next I want to make sure that the button's above any other blocks or elements in the page, so we'll give this a Z index. And apologies to anyone in America watching this thinking, Z? What's he talking about? Of a high value. It is actually Z. 9999. Nine, nine. Should well be enough. Now onto the position, now I'm just going to stick mine in the bottom right corner, but you can place this anywhere as I'll explain in a sec. So I'll give this a prop pro property, how hard is it to say property? So let's give this a property of bottom and a value of 1%. And you'll see he's moved down 1% from the bottom of the viewport. And then the last one we'll give this a right property, and again this can go at 1%. And all being good it should be fixed into the bottom right corner of the screen. But let's say you want it in the bottom left or the top right, well that's where we can change these properties and percentages. So we can change bottom to top and that'll move it 1% from the top of the screen. Same with right, we can change this to, yep, you've guessed it. And then with the percentages, these can be up to push the button further away from the edges. So it's just a case of messing around with these to find the perfect place for your button. Another thing we can do as well is use pixels instead of percentages, but I always just prefer to use percentages. So let's give this a test and see if it's working. So we'll open our website up, scroll, and the button's fixed. Let's click on the button. It's ringing. Call mate, how the chickens is it going? Daniel, good, good. How are you? How's Siri and the kids? They left me, said I was too square. Um, that's terrible. And how have you been? Terrible. I've had hemorrhoids the size of golf balls for about three weeks. Honestly, the little buggers sting so much I had to apply some... Too much information, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll call you back another day, bye, bye, bye. So as I was saying earlier, you can hide this on a desktop using media queries, and it's really simple. So in the CSS editor, we'll type at media only screen and a couple of normal brackets. And then between these brackets, we'll go min hyphen width colon, and we'll go with 660px. And come outside of the brackets and stick a couple of curly brackets. Then we grab the button block ID from above and paste it between the curly brackets. It's curly brackets, I stick this. Then we follow this up with more curly brackets. And then between these brackets, we'll go display colon none. And then if we check the desktop version out, you can see by the magic of media queries, it's completely disappeared. So we flick it to mobile and you can see the button sitting there in the bottom right corner. So cheers for watching, whack the like button if you haven't already, subscribe to see more stuff like this, and hopefully I will see you in the next one. See ya. Bye.